This is a Maytag clothes dryer, which I have owned for many years. I bought it secondhand, and it did not come with any documentation or manuals. It's been working great all these years, but in the last load of laundry, this dryer became extremely hot. So hot that it burned my fingers just touching it. So the temperature in these dryers is controlled using thermostats, and I suspect there has been a thermostat failure. So I don't, I don't know the actual model number of this dryer, so we will look around and see if we can get a model number and go from there. Fortunately, on the back of the dryer, there is a schematic, old yellow paper, kind of tattered with age, but we do have a model number. It says model. DE90-306-406. And that means that this schematic applies to model DE90 or DE306 or DE406. The schematic shows that there are two thermostats. Here's the heating element here. And the first thermostat is called a cycling thermostat. And what it does is it cycles up and down between an upper and a lower limit. When the temperature hits a certain high limit, it opens the circuit, blocking current to the heating element. And then the dryer will start cooling down when it hits the lower limit. The circuit then closes again and restores current to the heating element. Should this thermostat fail, we have a secondary safety thermostat. It's called the high limit thermostat. If the higher limit is hit, then this one will open and that will prevent overheating. Now, this dryer became so hot, I suspect that both of these thermostats have failed. They both just stayed open and the temperature just kept going up. Now, the cycling thermostat, it shows on our diagram that it is supplied by a black wire and a green wire. And the high limit thermostat is supplied by a black wire and a purple wire. Now, I've removed the back from the dryer. And here is our tumbler. And here is our belt that drives the tumbler. Now, here is our black and green wire, so this is our cycling thermostat. Now we will remove the wires from this thermostat. It's held on by two screws. And out it comes. Back in there, you can see there's another device. That down deep in there is the high limit thermostat. And that's going to be a little more difficult to get to. In order to get at the high limit thermostat, you have to lift up the top metal piece of the dryer. You start with these two screws on the back, one here, and one over here. Once those screws are removed, you can then lift this piece up and slide it forward. And that will release the front part of the top piece. That will expose the insides of the front part of the dryer and the high limit thermostat. In order to get to the high limit thermostat, I've had to lift up the top of the dryer. Okay, so here it is right here. here. And there's the black and purple wires. Remove those wires. And we have two screws. Oh, we really need to loosen one of them. Okay, now with one with one screw out, I can just sort of wiggle this thing out. Okay, now there's thermostat number two. I'm going to test these thermostats uh, with an ohmmeter and a heat gun. I'm going to start with the cycling thermostat. And so if we hook it up to our ohmmeter, we should get conduction. And our ohmmeter swings all the way over to zero ohms. I'm going to expose it to this heat gun. I'm also going to attempt to make a temperature reading. I don't know how accurate this is going to be, but I'm just going to sort of lie the tip of this thermometer next to our thermostat. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply heat to this thermostat and let's see what happens.
Okay, it just clicked off. Wow, our thermometer is telling us it's about 280 degrees. Very high. I think that is really hot. Okay. So it appears that it is clicking off. You know, as it cools off, you know, it should uh, close again. And we should see the ohm meter swing back. Up oh, there it goes. All right, so it is opening with high temperature and then closing again, as it should, but it seems that the temperature is just way higher. And I don't know how accurate this was. It was reading around 280 degrees when it clicked, but it just sure felt awfully hot. It seems to be doing what it's supposed to do, except the temperature is way too high. Okay, I'm going to try the high limit thermostat this time. And see if this one clicks. Now again, we should hear a click, and the needle should swing to infinity. We let it cool off, and it should click again, and then and the meter will swing back to zero. That's what's supposed to happen. Okay. Okay, it just clicked. Clicked at a little over 150 degrees. I heard it click, but the circuit stays closed. Now it clicked back. The circuit stayed closed the entire time. It never opened. So this one appears to be clicking at a more reasonable temperature, but it's not breaking the circuit. So this one is also bad. So as I suspected, both of these thermostats are bad. One is opening up at way too high of a temperature. The other one isn't opening up at all. That's a really dangerous situation when you think about it. And it's consistent with what I felt. The dryer was extremely hot to the touch. I mean, that's, you could just see that causing a house fire or something. Now look at this. If I press on this, I can open the circuit. Look at that. I'm going to try to get the light on this thing in such a way that we can see it click. There. Let's see if it clicks back. What happens? It should change shape. There, you saw it pop. So this piece of metal here, this is the bimetallic strip right there. It's exposed for some reason. This piece of metal is, is made out of two dissimilar pieces of metal layered on top of each other, and they have different coefficients of thermal expansion. So as it heats up, it bends and then it hits a point where it changes shape, and that's supposed to break the circuit. But it's just, for some reason, it's not breaking the circuit. If I push on it myself, I can break the circuit. Okay, so it's trying to work, but it's just not quite there. Okay, so both of our thermostats are reading bad. Now, the next question is, what do we replace these with? Uh, on the cycling thermostat, I actually do have a number. 3-3035. Good, that gives me something to go on. Unfortunately, on the high limit thermostat, I don't have any number on it. On the underside of these thermostats, they both have this number L155. I assume that means they both uh, click open at 155 degrees Fahrenheit, which seems odd. Why would the high limit thermostat open at the same temperature as the cycling thermostat? I would think that the high limit thermostat would open at a higher temperature than the cycling thermostat. Okay, so we do a little internet searching for parts. Uh, the Maytag washers appear to be made by Whirlpool. And if we search for DE90 or DE306 or DE406, this is what we come up with. Apparently, there was a design change in 516.67. So if you're after 516.67, these would be your thermostats. So this one is going to be the cycling thermostat, and this is going to be the high limit. And there's our number for the cycling thermostat 3 dash. 3035, and that does match the number on our thermostat. And now we have a number for our high limit thermostat, 3-5865. If you search for parts for the Maytag DE406 or 306 or 90, you find a number of different thermostats, all of them at different temperatures. This one is at 140 to 120. This one is at 130 to 120. This one here appears to be our high temperature limit thermostat. 
but they have it listed as cycling thermostat, 305865. Anyway, 155 to 120. There's another cycling thermostat, 145 to 130. And we have another one, 130 to 117. So there's a bunch of them here. If you search online for the cycling thermostat, part number 3-3035, you find lots of them available for sale at a wide variety of price points. Here's a particularly inexpensive one here available on eBay for $10. I'm sure it's aftermarket and not OEM, but still it would probably work fine. But these are some of the other numbers you might see in under 303035 or 3-03035. However, as I search for the 303035 part number or similar parts, I keep coming back to this part here, 694674. This, ther this thermostat has five settings, the upper limit varying from 155 to 135, and it varies at five degree increments, and the lower limit is 20 degrees below whatever the high limit is. This thermostat will replace many thermostats on different models. And again, this thermostat is available at reasonable prices from a number of vendors on eBay. This part is also available directly from whirlpoolparts.com at the outrageous price of $75. Wow. I could probably buy a whole new dryer on Craigslist for less than $75. So I will probably order this aftermarket multi-temperature thermostat replacement for the cycling thermostat. A replacement for the high limit thermostat was a bit more difficult. There wasn't a universal replacement. Basically, what I found on eBay were some of these new old stock replacements, probably sitting on a shelf for decades. But here we have a part number match. But the part number on the thermostat itself is different, as you can see, but they do match up. So either this number or this number should be good to search for. And as you can see, this one's being sold in this very old looking bag. Okay, I ordered two thermostats off of eBay. This is our cycling thermostat here, again, in, an, in a new old stock bag. It comes with instructions that are both in English and French and a list of uh, thermostats that it matches up with and the setting with which to put the thermostat to. Now this thermostat is adjustable. It is adjustable from 135 to 155 in five degree increments. A is 135 and E is 155. I think I'm going to set this one at 150 just slightly below where it was originally. Now it's a little bit taller than the original. I think it should still fit okay. And the uh, terminals are the same size, so those should fit okay too. Now here is our high temperature thermostat, 305865, again in a new old stock bag. Here it is out of the bag. And here's the original. Now the replacement is again a bit thicker, but I think it should fit okay. Again, the terminals are the same size. And it came with some paperwork confirming that the 305865 part is compatible with the 303036 part. Now we have our thermostat hooked up to the ohmmeter. Again, we're going to test it. As we heat it up, we should hit the critical temperature and the circuit should open. We should hear a click and we should see the needle swing to the left. And there we go. Uh, about 150 degrees or so. And the circuit has opened, as it should. And in a moment, it should close again. I may have to do it myself. There. OK. Okay, good. So we know the high limit thermostat is working as expected. Okay, now we have the cycling thermostat hooked up to the ohmmeter. Again, closed circuit, zero ohms. 
and we have our meat thermometer in here as well. To get a rough idea of the temperature that it opens, and we will apply heat and see what happens. Okay, and we opened up, and well, temperature is still rising there. So this is about 180, although I think it opened before it hit that point. Okay, circuit opened as we expected, and we'll just give it a little time here to cool off. And you should hear it click, and the circuit will close again. And my thumb can absorb some of that heat. And there it goes. Okay. Okay, so the cycling thermostat is operating as expected. We are looking into the front right side corner, looking from the top down. The top panel of the dryer has been pushed to the side so we could access it. Okay, now I put the high limit thermostat into place. I had to bend this lead a little bit down because this thermostat is taller than the original and it's getting a little cramped in there. I don't want that wire rubbing against the top and creating a potential short circuit. Incidentally, those two terminals there, those go to the heating element. Now we've got the cycling thermostat back into place. Now with both replacement thermostats installed, we have now slid the lid back into place. Just to review here a little bit, the lid has to be slid forward and then then the lip of this thing slides under two metal tabs here and here, and then you slide it in. So these tabs catch it. On the back of the top piece is a vertical metal bar. And that bar has got a hole here and here, which is held in by a screw. Looking from the back, there's one of those screws, and there's the other screw. And once again, there is our cycling thermostat. And all we have to do is put the back cover on and give it a test. Okay, I've just dried a load of wash. And I'm glad to report everything came out nice and dry and no overheating at all. So it looks like my 56 year old dryer is good for another 56 years. Okay, thanks for watching.